Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Ace Report. And listen, love you guys. Sorry I missed the live last night, but my, it was my daughter's birthday. And sometimes I just can't can't make it. Family first, you know how it is. And then I, you know, I might have finished the night watching my Niners win. So there you go. Hey. But hey, I had to put together this quick video because there was just too much good stuff today to have that's going on for the campaign in our electoral uh uh in, in this election process to boost trump trump is just killing it right now and kamal is tanking so i wanted to go over a few things today especially because we got absolute bomb shell news and guys you uh, this is not being talked about enough but i'm going to cover it because i don't think many others are but listen to this so virginia joffrey came out today i don't know if you guys know who she is but she is like the most well-known jeffrey epstein uh victim she's been out there her testimony's all over the place and you know there's been a lot of people out there behind the scenes saying trump was on epstein's list he doesn't want it out there blah 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 trump blah, blah, blah. he's really one of them and there's <clears throat> murmuring about this is one of the big excuses they use not to like him and today she dropped a bomb on the democrats and all these people who use as an excuse to not support trump or to lie about him Virginia Joffrey today at Elon Musk and says, I am Virginia Roberts, used to be Joffrey. I know the Epstein client list. I met Trump when I worked at Mar-a-Lago. Hopefully our new president again. Unbelievable. She has flat out endorsed Donald Trump. You know there is no way in hell this woman endorses him if he was one of the Epstein clients. This is massive guys this is going to throw such a wrench and because the democrats can never outright say this because they don't want people going into this and looking at stuff but they were definitely seeding it around their people and this has been broken down this is an october surprise but it's for our side and it's going to be behind the scenes a little more but i'm telling you this is a big deal she goes on to say much to be tight-lipped about on the list but also wary who i tell she's got all the names guys she has all the names. She says, only someone of your candor who knows what to do with this information could help. She's offering information to Elon. What are your thoughts and plans about saying things right in the Billionaire's Playboy Club? Please DM for more. Thank you. And there she is, writing from whatever plane she's on. But this is, <laughs> this is massive, guys. She has, this is a full-on endorsement from the number one most well-known Epstein victim. If this doesn't put to rest... The Trump nonsense, nothing will. This is just another way he has been vindicated and another reason for people to full on jump in. And this is something anybody can use if you ever hear any of that nonsense. And the momentum just keeps coming. So let me go through the rest of everything going on because, um, guys, I'm telling you at this point, if things continue the way they're going, we are heading for a Trump landslide. A couple weeks ago, I made a video on my live and I said 95% chance of Trump winning. I am up to 98% chance he wins handily. I, I'm, I'm not even joking. There's so much going on, whether it's this right here or the way the hurricane went away. I'm sorry, I'm a spiritual guy. I believe that was a sign from God that we're going to avert some major storms here. Um, I'm just telling you all the things that keep adding up for Trump are unbelievable. And on top of that, his momentum is the strongest it's ever been. I'm not just saying uh, in this race, I'm saying ever. He has got more momentum on his side than 2016 or 2020 he ever did. One he won, the other one he lost for, for YouTube's sake, I'll say that. And... But the truth is, he is far better place than he's ever been. Let's go through it and let me show you. As of today, the average on RCP, RealClearPolitics.com, has Harris at a 1.8% lead. And if you're new to this, you might be saying, well, she's ahead. That's scary. She's winning. No. They always undercount Trump voters. And besides, she has to win by at least four points popular vote in order to win the electoral college and 
here's some of the proof right here. Clinton was up 5.8 at this point and lost. At the same point in October 2016, she was ahead of where Kamala's is, Kamala Harris is right now by four freaking points. That is huge. That is a massive downside for Harris. And Biden, at this point in October 2020, had a 10-point lead. Kamala Harris is 8.2 points behind that. And Biden pulled off a squeaker. And we all know he had a little help doing so. But... It was a squeaker, barely pulled that off. And she is eight points behind, guys, eight points behind. It, we're talking, that's like almost 15 million votes. That is impossible to overcome. I don't care what they pull. Let's keep going though. Swing polls came out today. This is from Fabrizio. This is uh, who Donald Trump uses as his internal pollster. So we know accurate, very good pollster. He's got Georgia, Trump plus five, Arizona three, Nevada three, Pennsylvania one, Wisconsin one, Michigan one, North Carolina one. That is every single swing state, every single one. And even the Trump pollsters sometimes have trouble counting every Trump voter. And the reason why is a lot of Trump voters don't do polls. They don't do polls. They are the people who don't even vote. They just show up. Pollsters can't find those people. They only show up on voting day. And I'm telling you right now, all of these, you could just go ahead and might as well add one to two points to each one of them, which this is every single swing state. If he carries every single swing state, guys, uh, it's not only a landslide, but he's also probably going to pull off a couple states we can't see yet. Maybe New Mexico, maybe Virginia, maybe New Hampshire, who knows? But this means he's within striking distance of other places, which is probably why he's going and doing events in New York, California, and Colorado at the end of this month. That is confidence, and it tells me that there's a lot. Uh, they're not worried as much about the swing states anymore, which that's pretty huge, and they're going to try to pick off some more. Let's keep going. This came out today. President Biden hesitated to drop his re-election campaign in part because he and his senior advisors worried Vice President Kamal Harris wasn't up to taking on Donald Trump. Hey, maybe wily old crazy Biden knew something. I mean, she is falling apart on the campaign trail right now. And this comes from Axios.com, a left-wing rag highly respected in the Washington, D.C. political establishment. Highly respected. And even they're saying... Oh, yeah, Biden knew this. <laughs> he didn't want to run. These are the excuse pieces already they're putting out there. saying They're coming up with the reason she's losing. They're already starting to paint the picture. We knew she was going to lose. They're starting to do it because they're scared. And if the media turns on her, it's because they know she's a lost cause. And they are looking to, to save themselves. That's what's starting to happen here. We got Pew Research came out today with a poll for Kamala. Barely had her up. I think she was up one or two in it. I don't have the poll right in front, but it doesn't matter because both of those are under uh, the threshold she needs. And on top of that, Pew Research is one of the most uh, respected polls, even though it's not it's not been one of the most accurate, but it's one of the most respected in the liberal atmosphere, which means they are going to be freaking out. And it says right here, final Peel research polls, very bad news for Kamala Harris, especially given how badly they understated Trump's support in the past. And there you go. That's the key right there. That said, even if they didn't miss this time, it's not enough for her to win. Panic time. The Kamala campaign is freaking out, especially after all these interviews she did. None of it's working. Everybody's laughing at her because her gaffes are insane. The things she's saying are exactly what she shouldn't be saying. She had a town hall tonight on Univision. It's going horribly. And we'll talk about that on my next live. But it's going really badly. I've seen a couple of clips and it is ugly, guys. And if she does that, that's her one big reach out to the Hispanic vote, which she's already losing. This could cause her to lose more. And if she... Listen... This is a ship that's taking on a lot of water right now, this Kamala campaign. And the truth is, there's no sign of an end. There's no sign of an end. They've pulled out everything on Trump that they've had, and it hasn't stuck. They have nothing left. So what else are they going to pull? Who knows? But I'm telling you, the election right now 
is falling further and further away from Kamala and there's no signs of any way she could catch back up. It is, it's getting really bad. Rich Barris again writes this, there's an awful lot of red on real clear politics and real clear polling right now. Perhaps the worst time for Kamala Harris. People are breaking. Trend is pro-Trump and people are starting to get ballots. Worst possible time for Harris. Uh, early voting starting in many states. Early voting starts here in North Carolina next Thursday. People are starting to put in their votes for Trump right as Kamala is in the worst part of her entire campaign. Guys, she lost in 2019 in the primary. She couldn't even get a vote. She dropped out before she even got a vote. She was doing so poorly. And they thought this woman, after three and a half years of being the least liked vice president of all time, they were going to just pump her up and nobody was going to figure it out in time for the election. They wanted it to be a short campaign. So there wasn't time for the people to figure it out again. But they're figuring it out right at the worst possible time for her. She has almost no time to fix this. And I'm by no means saying we have a guaranteed win here. I am telling you right now, though, it is panic time for them. And I just don't see how this could possibly turn around. Let's keep going. This is Kellyanne Conway, the old campaign manager for Trump. Donald Trump in his best polling era ever, ever. Even as media outlets are likely undercounting its voters again, look at the difference here between right now, 2020 and 2016. So here's the national. I already showed you guys this. By the way, she's dipped to 1.8 since that. That's why I showed you at the beginning. But look at Wisconsin. Six points behind Biden. 7.2 points behind Clinton. Pennsylvania. By the way, it's the battleground states that are always pulled worse. Just remember that. They're always off more than the national. Okay? Quite a bit more, actually. So we got Wisconsin off six points. Oh, I already did that one. Pennsylvania off seven and a half points lower than Biden. Clinton, almost 10 points less than Clinton. He, she lost Pennsylvania, guys. That's a polling miss of 10, 11, 12 points. And we think Trump winning right now means it's close? Probably not. Look at the differences here. Ohio, Trump won handily, Ohio, against Biden and Clinton. And he's polling a full eight points ahead of Biden and 10 points ahead of Clinton. Michigan, he won Michigan against Clinton. He's polling eight points ahead of where Clinton, again, he was against Clinton. Again, they will undercut him. These are This means these polls are actually not close. This actually, if you go by the last two election cycles, which we have zero reason to think the polls are fair this time, this actually means Trump could be five points ahead of Michigan or more. He's seven and a half points ahead of Biden. Arizona, uh, Th four points ahead of where Biden was. He barely lost that state. He did win here, but he's still pulling ahead of where he was in 2016 against Clinton. Nevada, it's a plus one, barely uh, seven points or six points, five points. Sorry, I can't do my math. Five points less than Biden, uh, only 0.3 than Clinton. So that's the closest one. North Carolina, he's ahead. He won both against Biden and Clinton. Okay, this one was missed by three, four points. He won against both of them. And he's ahead now. Georgia is the only one where he's coming in uh, lower than he did against Clinton. But he's still ahead where he was against uh, Biden. And this is about the margin of error of which he lost by. <laughs> lost by. Florida, again, Florida is going to go by Trump so far it's not even funny. One poll recently, a New York Times poll just had him up 14 points. Um, this, that's not even going to be close. This... Um, this guy's an election analyst. Very good stuff. Peter St. Ong. Um, New York Times panicking that the October surprises are all cutting the wrong way for Kamala. Two bumbled hurricanes in a bumbled Middle East war that could send energy prices soaring just in time for the election. They're freaking out. The media is freaking out. Her campaign's freaking out. Everything is falling apart. Uh, let's keep going. The internal polling, which looks like ours, was probably this bad six to eight weeks ago as bad as well. In other words... They've known for two months Kamala's dying out there, but they were able to keep it covered up. But you know what happens? Every election cycle, as the election gets closer, the polls tighten. They start to get a little more accurate because they know any, all that anybody's going to remember 
is how they pulled the final election tally. So they don't want to be off too much. They want to get a little closer, and this is what's happening. It's The pollsters are actually starting to do their job a little better. Not even all the way yet. They still had huge misses on the both the, the last two elections because they were trying to keep Trump voters away by saying, you guys are going to lose anyways. Trump voters don't act like that, though. They show up. They don't care. You can't, you can't tell them to go away. But the polling is catching up to where Rasmussen is catching or saying uh, it's bad. It's bad. She's bleeding out there. The difference is the media, Democrat media machine won't allow that narrative because they wanted to give her a chance to make it up, which is what they did. They gave her two months and she fumbled it away because she's awful. And now we even have out here uh, this article from The Guardian, Harris's campaign record one billion funds fails to translate into swing state advantage. She spent a billion dollars, guys, and she hasn't get, got nothing to show for it. Pierce Morgan's out there saying, Trump's going to win. <laughs> can't help himself. He's just looking at everything and saying, there's no way. There's no way. You can't do this. I mean, look at this. A billion dollars. And in the swing states, she's down in all of them. This is wild. Uh, on top of this, we had the Quinnipiac poll the other day, which is a huge left-wing poll showing Trump winning in swing states and within the, the range he needs to be in the uh, popular vote to win. Quinnipiac had... Uh, Biden up by like 10 in the last election. This is, they, they can't hide it. They can't hide the wave that's coming. So after seeing all that, guys, from the Epstein stuff to the polls where they're trending to the uh, the way the Kamala campaign is freaking out, I'm telling you right now, the way the media is starting to turn on her, all the signs are there. If we show up, which we will, if we show up and do everything we need to do, vote and whatever else you can do. Guys, we, we lose this one. Trump's going to win handily, which is what we need to hope and pray for. He wins in a landslide. Because with a landslide, there's a mandate. The American people are behind you, and you can get everything done you need to do in the next four years. And guys, we're going to reshape America. I really believe at this point, this is completely Trump's to lose. I believe there's actually, if we show up, zero chance of him losing at this point. That's what I believe. That's not that that change with something insane that comes up, but it's going to take something insane and completely out of our minds to happen between now and then. They can't cheat enough to break this one. They can't. It's completely out of reach for them now, and they know it, and that's why we're seeing panic. It's a beautiful thing. Let's go, Donald Trump. We got this one, guys. Anyways, God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all soon.